please support this channel by clicking on the links below. Afrocentricity by Molithi Kete Asante. Kingism and Nonviolence. Born in 1929, Martin Luther King Jr.'s childhood and youth paralleled the long years of lynching and the Depression as well as the attendant problems following two world wars. During his adolescence, the United States emerged from the Second European World War indebted to its African citizens who had fought bravely to defend democracy. But instead of reaping the accrued interest from that debt, African American men and women were denied at home the very democracy they defended abroad. The wartime economy had encouraged large numbers of our people to migrate north. After the war, however, the industrial shift to a peacetime economy lessened the demand for cheap black labor and caused upheavals in the labor force of which blacks had become a part. Despite this, the desire of African Americans for quality education, housing, and jobs remained unabated. Consequently, the objectives of black people met with strident racism and political apathy towards their post-war plight. Although this undercurrent for confrontation existed before he came to national attention, King became the catalyst for such a national explosion. Since 1955, nonviolence and civil disobedience have become synonymous with Martin Luther King. In that year, Mrs. Rosa Parks refused to give her Montgomery, Alabama bus seat to a white man, and her defiance sparked the fires of the civil rights movement. What Mrs. Parks did by her actions, King elevated to a national moral philosophy which became the catalyst for black activism of the 1960s. He redefined the limits of civil disobedience for the world and breathed new vigor into peaceful protest against entrenched racist establishments. His nonviolent philosophy coupled with active civil disobedience brought about numerous legal and social changes in America. King was the classic nonviolent activist who argued for moral force and redemptive love. Few activists have galvanized the spirit of the times more than King, and, as is often the case, that charisma determines who will and who will not appeal to the masses. King not only appealed to the masses, but his philosophical approach also raised the issue of just and unjust laws to the foreground of social change. In his Letter from a Birmingham Jail, 1963, he defined just laws as those which are keeping with the laws of God and unjust laws as those which violated human dignity. He determined that to demonstrate respect for the rule of law, he and his followers had to submit to the penalty enacted by the legal system whether those laws were unjust or just. However, from an Afrocentric perspective, this aspect of King's philosophy raises several questions, one of which is the need to accept any penalty for unjust laws. This contradiction was never successfully explained in King's philosophy. Despite its successes, the age of King was an age of contradictions within the African-American community. He saw himself standing between the apathetic and the nationalist. This was his principal contradiction. It became impossible for him to stand between the population and unless he stood for someone else. In other words, his philosophy was a legacy of holding forth between the parts of our community rather than standing with those who rejected the hollow American promise. King viewed himself as a positive force for whites who wanted to ward off the racial profits of nationalism while simultaneously helping apathetic blacks towards self-discovery. The net effect, of course, was the radicalization of the apathetic and King's own ostracization from the nationalist. Consequently, the more he stood between these opposing forces within the community, the more contradictions emerged. Afrocentricity was only beginning to develop, and King was unable to project or extend the philosophical notions which radically challenged European reality. Despite this, 
the momentum of Dr. King's charisma and the timeliness of the civil rights movement ushered in a host of ministers like Jackson, Abernathy, Young, Walker, and Shuttlesworth who took up the batons of nonviolence and led numerous marches in a hundred cities. In the realm of philosophy, King's views were new and initially dynamic. In the realm of action, King's age made the demonstration a rhetorical instrument. And in the reel of ethics, he extended the moral frame of reference. Kingism serves in a muffled form, but it should be remembered as a significant action philosophy, not as an Afrocentric statement, which it never claimed, nor could ever claim.